Hello, beautiful people. This is part three, I believe, on your pretest number two for unit five. Uh, this is, again, part three. If you want to see the other parts, go ahead and click over there. So we're going to start with number 15. Disclaimer, if you hear a loud bell, I apologize. We are on campus. If you hear the intercom go off, again, I apologize in advance. Also, if I make a mistake, I am human. It is probably going to happen. Just let me know where the mistake is so we can both learn from my mistake. All right, let's get started. So number 15 is asking us to write each expression is in exponential form. So all it's asking us to do is to translate this and to have a exponent that has a fraction, that is a fraction. So an exponent that is a fraction. So what you need to know is the power, do you notice how that power is on top? And then this is the inside. And then this right here is the index. So again, power index. And this one here, I have a difficult time pronouncing this word, but it's radicand. Um, but this radicand kind of be, becomes the base. We're going to put exponents in it because all of the insides are, are becoming the base. Then you have your exponent. You notice how your exponent is on top, so we're going to put it on top. And your index is kind of on the inside, so we're going to put it below. Now, here's where reading the directions is super duper important because you can do more with this. You can complicate your life. Uh, you don't want to. Okay, so if it's asking us to write an expression in exponential form, here's an exponent, that's the form, and you're done with that one. Right, moving on. Number 16 is asking to simplify. So this is a little bit more complicated, but you are going to, you're going to be okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I would like to do it. You can do this in many different ways. I'm going to choose to use a power property and rewrite this as 216 to the 5 thirds and x cubed to the 5 thirds. Okay. This right here says that we have, here's your power. Again, power is always on top. Index is always the denominator. So this is saying 216 cube root, excuse me, cube root of 216 to the fifth power. This one is saying, this one I'm going to keep as a fraction. This one is saying 3 over 1. This is my exponent being raised to my exponent. So then we have to say we're going to multiply that. So 3 times 5 is 15. We, 3 times 1 is 3. Now, I know I'm using two forms. Bear with me. Hopefully, it will all come together in a little bit. Okay. This right here, I'm going to start with this section here. Notice how this is a fraction, but it's a fraction that's bigger than 1. So what is the largest whole number? that we can create with this fraction. Here's our base, our x is our base. Then we have, I can do three goes into 15, ooh, five times. And there's actually no remainders. If there was a remainder, then we would um, use the product rule. But since th this is a whole number, then we're gonna just keep it for right now. I'm gonna box it so I don't forget it, okay? You don't, this is not the final answer. I'm just boxing it. So I do, don't forget that I need that here. And then I'm going to work with this one here, the root, excuse me, cube root of 216 to the fifth power. That's exactly the same thing as saying cube root of 216 to the fifth power. These two are exactly the same, okay? So in my opinion, I have no idea... What, 216 to the fifth power? In my opinion, that's a lot harder to solve than this one here because there's no calculators on this test. So this means I want three numbers that are the same that give me 216. So I believe this one is 6 times 6 times 6 because I'm thinking 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, and that's too small. So I'm thinking 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. 
So then we know that the cube root of 216 is 6. And then we still have this power left over. So 6 to the 5th power is a very big number. Okay, very big number. Since it's asking us to simplify, I will actually um, accept this in two different answers. If you want to solve this, that's okay. That's equal to 7,776. Or you can do the following. I am okay with both. So do you notice how we have, I'll put this in a box as well. We have x to the fifth and we have 6 to the fifth power. Notice how the power is the same. Okay. So what we can do is we can actually combine them and say we have 6x to the fifth power. And then if you want to double check your answer, you can use the power property and say 6 to the fifth power, x to the fifth power, well, that's what we have, and therefore it's the same thing. Now, if you really wanted to do like the very simplest form and use numbers, this answer, the final answer would be 7,776 x to the fifth power. I am okay with either answers. Okay. All right, let's continue. Number 17, solve each equation. Remember to check for extraneous solutions. Remember extraneous solutions are solutions that you get that actually don't work when you plug them back in. So let's solve. So I have a square root equaling a square root. So we need to get rid of our roots. I'm going to square both sides, get rid of that. Remember, we're back in integrated math one, we're back in pre-algebra, algebra. What you do to one side, you always have to do to the other side. So I'm here with 3n minus 22 is equal to 18 minus 2n. I'm going to add 2n both sides. So I have 5n minus 22 is equal to 18. I'm going to add 22 to both sides. So I have 5n is equal to 8, 9, 10, 2, 3, 4, divide by 5, divide by 5, n is then equal to 8. Check your answer. You must check your answer. You're not done. Okay, 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 minus 22 is root 2. 18 minus 2 times 8 is also 2, so therefore it works, and 8 is not an extraneous solution, so there are no extraneous solutions. All right, let's try this one here. Solve each equation. Now, I had a, a lot of questions on this one, so I want, to, I want to show you my way of doing it. This right here says 320 is equal to 5 times x to the 3 halves power. Now, I want you to always do this. Separate stuff out. Separate stuff out. It's much easier to see what your step should be, what your next step should be, once you can separate the current steps that you have. So notice how we have 5 times something. So pretend this is in a bubble. We need to take care of everything outside of the bubble first before we can deal with the bubble. So since we have five times, I'm going to divide by five both sides. So we have 320 divided by five, and that is 64. And 64 is equal to x, three halves. Now, in all reality, and, and I'm going to be very truthful, visually, I have no idea what this is. It's x to the 3 halves. So I'm a visual person, so I have to rewrite this. If you know what this means, go for it. I don't. So I'm going to rewrite this. This is 64 is equal to x squared, uh, excuse me, x cubed, and the index is 2. And I just caught myself. Did I see that? This right here could be greater than 1, but I'm okay with that. I don't want to split x's up because I, I want to solve for x. I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to square both sides. 
So 64 squared is a big number. So that is 4096 is equal to x cubed. Then I'm going to cube root it and see what that gives me. And that gives me 16. Now check for your extraneous solutions. Uh, actually, it doesn't ask for that. It just says solve. So there you go. We're moving on then. Number 19, number 19, here you go. Okay, step number one always on stuff like number 19, sketch the graph of the given function. Please circle or underline all of your variables, especially in factor four. These will give you your roots or your zeros. Also, anytime you have a missing exponent, Write that in because that's going to help you with your total degree of the function. Okay, so start counting with me. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The total degree is 11. That is odd. Then we have leading coefficient is negative. We don't really care about that. It's 6. All we care about is that it's negative. Okay, so we have negative and odd. Negative means your left-hand side and your right-hand side are going to be opposite. Negative means it's going to be a decreasing. So think of it this way. Decreasing function is going down a hill. So negative, decreasing. Odd means your left and your right-hand side going down a hill. So here's your left-hand side. Here's your right-hand side. So left-hand side's going up, right-hand side going down. So that is your end behavior. After that, you need to identify your roots or your zeros. So what does x have to be in order for x to be 0? Zero? 0. This one is 1. This one is negative 2, negative 4, and 3. Behaviors at each 0, this is a John Travolta. This is a John Travolta. This is a parabola. This is a parabola, and this is a line. Plot your points. So I have 0, 1, negative 2, negative 4, and 3. After that, for your left-hand side behavior, for your left-hand behavior, it's going up. So find your most left-hand point and do an up arrow. For your right hand, find your most right-hand point, do a down arrow. Now we get to combine the middle and make sure that it is very smooth. Ooh, let me move this up, sorry. Uh, it's very smooth, no sharp edges. Okay, so we have negative four is a John Travolta. Make sure that your John Travolta, the um, turning point is through that zero, must be through that zero. Then we have negative two is a parabola. So we're gonna come up and we're gonna kiss negative two x is just linear, so that's going to be crossing a line. Uh, then we have, what is this? Uh, this is 1. So 1 is a parabola as well. I'm going to actually come down here. We're going to use white out on that. Parabola. And then at 3, we have John Travolta again. And connect it. Be careful with your John Travoltas. One of the mistakes that I'm finding is that your John Travoltas are facing the wrong way. And so then... There we go. And uh, if it's facing the wrong way, if you have a John Travolta that's supposed to go like this, but you draw it this way, and you're coming in from here, this is no longer a function, does not pass the vertical line test, okay? So if we have something that's connecting like this, this does not pass the vertical line test, it's not a function, so you will be losing points here. Make sure that you have a function and then we used white out on that one, and this is smooth curve. All right. Uh, extra credit, find the surface area of the figure below. I gave out an entire worksheet. I don't even know how many problems there are on there, but there are a lot, so you need to reference that. Uh, for finding all zeros, so you need to 
identify that this is a difference of two cubes. So we need to rewrite this as two cubes. So this is A, this is B. Remember, it's A, always same, always different, and always positive. Okay, so let's fill that in. So we have x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. So then identify your 0. This one is already factored, kind of, right? So we have this to factor, but we have this. So this is, oh, what is this? This is 2, right? 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have final 0, so our 0 is 2. But since it says all zeros, remember there's a difference between find all possible zeros, where we use the rational root theorem, and find all zeros. Those are two different things. Anytime it says find all zeros, you actually have to keep factoring or using the quadratic formula to identify what your x's are. You're not just saying hypothetically these are what it could be. This is actually saying these are exactly those. All right, so I have officially ran out of room, so I'm going to just grab a separate sheet of paper. And continue working there. If I have a super separate sheet of paper, there it is. All right, let's continue. So this one here, let's see if we can factor. Uh, I'm thinking four and two. Two times two is four, but two plus two is still two. So I'm assuming we're going to have to use the um, quadratic formula to factor this. So quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus square root uh, b squared minus four ac all divided by 2a. So this is your a, b, and c. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 1. This is a 1 in front of here. 4 times 1 times c is, oh, excuse me. Yeah, times c is 4. All divided 2 times a, a is 1. So then this here is, oh, you can't see. We have negative 2 plus or minus root 4 minus 16 divided by 2. So this here is uh, 4 minus 16 is negative 8. So negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 8 divided by 2. Simplify this radical here. So we have negative 2 plus or minus uh, 2 Oh, let me back up because I want to show you guys something. I'm going to use the product property here. Now, it's going a little bit extra, but that's okay. I'm going to use the product property on this. This square root of negative 8 is the square root. And this is why I have 